I feel deeply grateful and humbled to be the steward of a piece of land that has been in my family for about 80 years. And I'm deeply troubled by the challenges that land and the species who reside there are facing. Whenever possible, I'm trying to protect, repair, and restore habitat that has been degraded and create opportunities for native plants and animals to survive and thrive. This film is meant to document a cerulean warbler habitat restoration project we started a couple of years ago with support and funding from the NRCS. My name is Lincoln Oliver. I am a master's student in the Wildlife and Fisheries Resources Program at WVU. I'm working on a project that looks specifically at cerulean and goldwing warbler response to um, private lands habitat management that goes on in these two NRCS conservation projects. Cerulean warblers are a big time species of conservation concern. Since 1966, ceruleans have estimated to decline 70%. There's a variety of different factors why ceruleans have declined. Ceruleans are, they breed here in the Appalachian and some parts of the Midwest, but they're also equally a South American bird. They overwinter in South America, so there's different factors like deforestation down there that you have to consider that also influences their decline. A basal area measurement is essentially how dense the forest is. The thought behind all this management for ceruleans is that lower basal areas will actually increase their abundance. So we want to be able to quantify that in our analysis of what changed from pre-treatment to post-treatment. Ceruleans benefit from habitat management and in forested settings where ceruleans breed, there are a few different things that you can do to make the habitat better for cerulean warblers and ultimately increase their abundance and hopefully reverse the population declines that they've seen. There's a few different forest management techniques like shelter wood harvests, even uh, lighter techniques like thinnings uh, that can be used to take out some undesirable trees, promote the growth and regeneration of more beneficial trees, and create the structure that they prefer for breeding. We're out here conducting research through point count surveys. We're listening for cerulean warblers in the 16 acres that you've managed on your habitat. We're looking specifically at the area that you've cut over using a selective harvest, looking in those canopy gaps, trying to find cerulean warblers. This type of management is beneficial to a lot of different things. Creating heterogeneous canopy structure, managing forests for wildlife, specifically here for ceruleans, is really beneficial for a number of game species like deer and turkeys. Also for other non-game species, a variety of other birds will benefit. Um, and it's also just good for forest health in general. We're two, two years in post-treatment here on this site. I am not an NRCS employee, but I know what cerulean habitat's supposed to look like. And you've created your canopy gaps, you've made a significant impact in lowering the basal area, and you've managed for invasive species. So everything looks really good here to me. While we didn't hear any ceruleans today, and we didn't hear any on our first survey in late May, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not here just because they're not singing. We know that they're here actually. You know, you've heard them here before as well as Kyle Aldinger, the biologist with the NRCS. So we know they're here. We survey the vegetation community to quantify the canopy structure. So if we go in there, we want to be able to tell with our vegetation surveys what you did, especially in a state like West Virginia that's 83% private land. So if we're trying to do management for cerulean warbler up here on the breeding grounds, there's really no way we can make any kind of an impact without incorporating private lands in that. 